Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a timepiece that bowed in 2017. This is the Larger Than Life Ball Engineer Hydrocarbon Aero GMT2. Let me zoom out a little bit and give you a better sense of this watch relative to my 16 centimeter circumference wrist because it's a big boy. Though nominally rated at 42 millimeters, I measured the outer diameter of the bezel, which is the largest outcropping of the round case, at 45 millimeters. So the outermost diameter of all the components spreads to 45 millimeters on the wrist, and that's really the size of the watch. For all practical purposes, don't think of this as a 42, because I would rate the smallest wrist viable with this watch at 15 centimeters, and almost universally I rate 42s for smaller wrists than that. Now you can see why the watch fits comfortably on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It's a big steel banana and this is an unusual amount of curvature and camber on a non-tonneau case. So it is actually an excellent ergonomic design. It's just a big old thing. 14 millimeters thick, the watch is 42 at the case, but 45 at the bezel. If you measure it lug to lug, 53.3 millimeters lug to lug, but then you measure the rigid most outcropping of the bracelet, so side to side, the biggest stance, the broadest measure, is 57.1 millimeters. So this is a big timepiece, and that's why despite the nominal 42 millimeter measurement, I say 15 centimeter circumference wrist or larger. Now the timepiece has a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs, but I would recommend you consider this bracelet to be your number one choice because it is very impressive. Ball's bracelets always surpass expectations. Given the prices of the watches, you never expect a bracelet that would put an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak to shame, at least in terms of structural rigidity. This feels like it could be on an offshore. There's not a lot of play. The finishing, though not artisanal, it is machine executed, is to a high grade and the design is attractive. There's a little bit of taper away from the lugs. You can see that the center links rise above the primary links, so there's a three-dimensional quality to this bracelet. Polished outer faces, satin primaries, the intermediates are of high polish, and you can see all of the removable links are fixed by screws, not pin sleeves. No that there are two half links on each side of the clasp, so you can really size this one precisely using the removable links. A surplus of half links is always welcome. Now Rolex lets you adjust its bracelets, its higher end bracelets anyway, five millimeters with easy link, a pull out tool free system. And here we have something similar, only it's 11 millimeters of pull out extension on each side. So you get 22 millimeters of extension all told and you get wonderful metal spring-loaded ball bearing pin snaps to maintain the tolerance of this over time. Everything's machined from the solid, so the feeling here is incredible. Again, it's the impression of a watch that costs much more money than Ball asks. Everything inside the clasp feels as though it's a component of a Mosler safe. And you could see that the clasp itself is nicely decorated with a combination of satin, polish, and you could see the ball logo externally, twin trigger release, so this one can't pop open accidentally. And look, fixed with multiple screws, not just screw fixed bracelet, multiple screws. And it's nicely integrated, tasteful use of satin finish on the lug hoods and the top of the conforming end profile links, uh, because in high polish it would be just too glam. Now the case band is narrow, which means it's high polish wears tastefully. And then you can see the outer facing of the bezel is also of high polish, again, accenting, not overpowering. A uh, nice feature of this watch is that it has a sapphire capped bezel, a bi-directional rotating 24 hour GMT style bezel. If you set the 24 hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time, you can use that bi-directional bezel to temporarily read three time zones on the watch. Now the nice thing about sapphire is that not only is it more scratch resistant than a ceramic bezel, it's, it's actually harder, but it's also a wonderful lustrous glossy and transparent cover that allows you to have a fully loomed set of calibrations underneath. So this bezel glows spectacularly while having a wonderful glossy gleaming and three-dimensional appearance that looks a little bit like a Blanc Pain 50 fathoms by day. Now jumping into the dial, you can see it's a lovely blue granular sort of high contrast instrument style. You can see that blue grain and it is lovely. Outboard there's a sloping blue metallic 12 hour flange and you can see inboard you have the 24 hour dial against which you read that skeletonized 24 hour GMT hand. You'll also note that you have local hours, a nice black center for all hands and then of course you've got a small 
date down at three o'clock. And the important thing to note about this dial is that it features tritium tracers. A tritium tracer is a glass tube containing tritium, a beta emitter. The emission of those beta particles, high-speed particles causing phosphorescence of the material that's sealed with the tritium inside the glass tubes. So it is self-activating. You can leave it in a dive locker or a duffel bag or a backpack, pull it out in the middle of the night and it's still glowing. It does not need to be activated by exposure to daylight or artificial light. And every 12 and a half years or so, Ball can swap out the tracers. They're a serviceable component. Now underneath the case back, which by the way is surrounded by a set of conversion factors, the timepiece with its GMT conversions outboard. Let me show you some of those. Featuring the great cities of the world. It has a geosphere center and underneath ETA 28932. Automatic winding, 21 joules, 42 hour power reserve, 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate. It features stop seconds. It also has a quick set date as well as a rapid adjustment system for the 24 hour hand. So a lot of double time watches like for example the Rolex GMT Master they force you to change the date by moving the local hour hand here you have a true quick set for the date as well as a quick set for the 24 hour hand and it's important to note that they are settable independently COSC certified Swiss chronometer 100 meters water resistant and a fascinating crown system it is a spring loaded push button that is very solidly made and then it removes the cover from the crown the crown is a screw down unit you thread it out so it has double protections you can't accidentally close on top of the withdrawn crown so you know you have to screw it back in and once it's screwed back in the mechanism simply snaps back into place on top it's surprisingly resilient so it protects you against making a serious mistake and it gives you all aspect protection against shearing or impact on the crown and the stem assembly this watch is full of toys so full in fact that 42 millimeters really wasn't enough think of it as a 45 you can see and own this ball engineer hydrocarbon aero GMT2 on the watch box.